Sidmere Civilization was released in 1991 by Microprose and cost an estimated $170,000 to develop. There was little to no promotion of the game, instead they relied on the Sidmere name and word them out to help encourage sales. Originally developed for MS-DOS, running on a personal computer, the game proved popular and went on to be released on several other platforms including Windows, Amiga, Atari ST, Mac, Super Nintendo, Playstation and more. In the game itself you must build an empire to stand the test of time beginning in 4000 BC, that's before the Bronze Age, and attempt to expand and develop right through to modern times. It can even last up until the year 2100 AD on the easiest setting where you will have evolved to space age and future technologies. A turn based strategy game where the player must adapt the role of ruler, you initially begin with one or two settlements and aim to build up an empire to rival other civilizations within the game. Mixed in with tasks such as exploration, negotiating and acts of diplomacy, you must decide where to erect new cities and which improvements and advances are needed as they progress. In the beginning, you choose which current or historical civilization to play as. Your selection prevents the computer's ability to control that civilization or others of the same colour. Each civilization can have its own health threats, so that can also affect gameplay. From the Aztecs to the Mongols, Romans and more, each civilization is led by a historical figure such as Mahatma Gandhi for India. Yes, that Gandhi. Born on the 2nd of October 1869, he was the leader of the Indian independence movement against British rule and is famous for his non-violent protests. The personal practice of being harmless to self or others under every condition. He believed that hurting people, animals or the environment is unnecessary to achieve an outcome. Gandhi went on to lead India to independence and inspired many civil rights and freedom movements around the globe. Because of Gandhi's amazingly peaceful outlook on life, his aggression rating in civilization was set to the lowest score of one. He is affectionately known as the father of the nation after all. Unfortunately within the game itself there was an integer overflow bug. The bug occurred when an arithmetic operation within the game attempted to create a numeric value that was outside of the range represented. The most common result of an overflow like this is that the least significant representable bit is stored and ends up wrapping around to the maximum. This is exactly what happened within the game. When democracy is chosen within the game aggression is dropped by two points. With Gandhi already on the lowest score of one, this meant that his new aggression score would drop to minus one, a negative number that was not recognised by the code. So instead of just dropping to minus one, it progressed to the next number in the loop, which is the highest rating of 255. This was insane as the most aggressive other leaders also in the game had a max rating of 10 at the time. This meant that our beloved Gandhi would suddenly become super aggressive. Worse still is that unfortunately this usually happened at the level of the game where nuclear weapons had become available. The once famous pacifist was now a new cappy maniac eager to destroy us all. Gandhi the infamous warmonger was born. The humour in the bug's actions wasn't lost in the developers. Gandhi the new cappy pacifist does have an odd ring to it though, so the cyclical aggression scale was fixed in later versions of the game. The team thought it was so funny however that in later civilization games an easter egg paying homage to the earlier aggressive versions of Gandhi was included, with Gandhi being deliberately programmed to have low aggression but keep his high nuke rating. <laughs>